Welcome to the Cherry Picker, the horror movie podcast where we like to kill people, but not really. I'm your host, Zach Cherry. And with me... As always. Well, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know if you're with me. But... <laughs> Are you with me? Who answers back? Must burn until her bones are black. A foolish witch. This out of brain must dissolve in the fiery flame. A witch who dares to say I'm wrong will not be with us very long. Eddie of Edward is truth. Hey. Memorized. Very yeah. good. Very good. I, I <laughs> had it. Had I it never pocket, know always. if you're going to do like launch into this like full monologue that goes on for like five minutes or not. So I just I, I don't interrupt like I, I i let you go but like the, it's like clearing a runway yeah i think that the one the one time that i did get very nervous and annoyed too let's be honest was when we did a nightmare on elm street because you were you're like the fog's cleared up blah, 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 whatever the fuck <laughs> it's bright it's gonna burn off soon it yeah. wouldn't be so bright i won't do the rest but yeah yeah. I remember, and I that one I put on my Instagram <laughs> because I adored it. <laughs> yeah, because it went on but for a while. Went. Anyway, hey, uh, we are talking about <laughs> The Witches today, uh, released May 25th, 1990 in the UK. Um, and this is a very interesting and unconventional uh, pick for us. Um, uh. Yeah, because this is, I mean, is this... Would you consider this horror? Like like maybe like kid kids horror? I mean, I would consider it probably gateway horror. And also uh, horror s gateway horror is good because or, or kids horror because I think parents see it that way and saw it that way. I remember having conversations. I was about uh, 10 when mm-hmm. the movie came out. I read the book prior. So I Same. already knew, you know, what was yeah, what was going on and loved it. Because I was familiar with Jim Henson and how extreme the puppetry can go, you know, in kind of like creepier directions, shall we say. So none of it was like new to me. I just thought it was inventive and fun. And like, and as an adult now, I look at it and just go, thank God this got made. Um, Because it's so out there, you know, like for family entertainment, like, thank God that a movie like that existed that was considered family friendly. But I know there were adults who I spoke to who would be like, I couldn't get past that transformation scene. When that little English boy turns into the mouse, I had to turn it off. <laughs> that belching was it for me. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm sorry, you were going to say something. <laughs> no, I forgot now. Uh, no, I was going to say that. <laughs> you don't, like, movies like this don't get made anymore. And I have not seen the new adaptation. I was very I careful have. to not say remake because... It's not a remake. It's just a, a new adaptation. Um, a reimagining. So, whatever. Uh, so I don't really know anything about that. And the book, uh, I did read. Because I was, I was like a huge reader of uh, Roald Dahl books yeah. back in the day. Like, that was the thing. I, was, I, I, I loved the books, and I loved the adaptations for it as well. And I, and I hadn't seen this one yet. I think I was more in the era of like Matilda and huh. James and the Giant Peach. Uh, I definitely had seen, I definitely had seen Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yes. Uh, Cause this mm-hmm. was still like in the nineties. So that, that, I mean, and Willy Wonka is probably like the first adaptation, right? When did that come out? Yeah, that I know of, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that came out 1970 something. I don't yeah. remember the exact But that, year. I mean, that's that always felt like a wider release movie. Like it was just like, it was yeah. more, it was e- e- more easily accessible. Whereas I remember this totally. one, we found it in like a, I don't, it might've been like a mom and pop convenience store that like rented out oh. VHS or something. Cause, cause we rented it cause we were going on a, like I was young and like with my parents and we were going on a trip to relatives or something. So we rented it and brought it with just so I'd have something to watch. And I, I remember watching it and it just, it felt different. Like it hit different than the other Roald Dahl movies that I was mm-hmm. used to at the time. And I don't know if I necessarily liked it. Like I think I liked the book better. Oh, okay. And and yeah, it'll be interesting to talk about like where I sit with this now, um, <laughs> but 
it's you know when when the the way that this movie came about because we didn't know what we were going to do for like the next episode after final destination and yeah. <laughs> you were just like I, I forget how it came up in conversation you were talking about the witches or you like referenced something to the witches and i was just yeah. like why don't we just do that next week and you're like oh okay mm-hmm. you know like great and then yeah i got I, really excited yeah <laughs> i put i put on the movie last night and i started watching it and i was just like got like the credits started and those credits are weird and wonky. They were actually making me oh, nauseous. Oh, I fucking love those opening credits. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and no, we're getting through it. I'm just like, oh shit, I fucked up. <laughs> oh no. Um, because it's not horror. Yeah. I'm like this. Yeah. I don't know like how, wh- what we're doing. It's witches. Um, but you know what? Here we are. <laughs> And and we're gonna make the best of it. So. I mean, we embrace camp, and I think that camp is certainly present in this. It, it, I think because it's too. Uh, I can't think of any other word to use. Uh, gay to be slapstick, <laughs> just pure slapstick. Yeah. And also, I mean, I think the presence of Angelica Houston and the level of the performance she gives, and also just the performances on the part of all the women <laughs> in the movie. Mm-hmm. Everyone's kind of like you know again playing to the back of the house, you know, <laughs> and the camera is right there. Yeah. And I wouldn't have it any other way. But at the same time, it's utterly, I feel, believable and uh, digestible. Everybody seems to be in the same movie, thank God. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's, I don't really that's fair. Any... Cool. Yeah. Well, bef- <laughs> before you give us your your premise, or yes. what are we calling it now? Yes. A premise or a synopsis? It's a premise. Okay, yeah. It's not a synopsis, because I do not work my way through the entirety of the action it's a of the tease. film. I just... Yeah, it's it's like a tra- it's like yeah. what you get from the trailer back in the day when you only got now what you would get from a teaser, basically. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, before we yeah. before before we get to that, uh, I just want to yes. welcome some new Patreon supporters. So, hello to Stephanie, David, and Brittany De Leon. So, welcome aboard. Thank you very much for your support. Very much appreciated. And if you too would like to support us. Uh, on Patreon or support my main YouTube channel on Patreon. You can head over to Zach Cherry, Z-I-C-K-C-H-E-R-R-Y, where you will get early access to every regular episode. Uh, you will also get, depending on what tier you're at, the Cherry Picker After Dark, which we do every month. Last month was Survivor Final Girls, which was a hoot. I actually watched it back. <laughs> Um, which I don't normally do, like, you know, very rarely do I go back yeah. and, like, listen to our episodes or watch things. But, you know, with, with with Survivor, I felt compelled to. And I was having a good time. I was just, like, because I, you know, we, we recorded it and I forgot most of what yeah. happened. But, like, right, uh, really living tired. through it again, it's just, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, we recorded that really late. But, yes. no, it was, it was really fun. So, I mean, if you are a fan of Survivor or even just a fan of the final girls of these movies that we talk about uh it is a blast i promise that you will have a good time and there is a ginormous back catalog of cherry picker after dark episodes that you also have access to including the other scream survivor we did three seasons of those uh that you'll get to watch or listen to as well this month for the cherry picker after dark we are doing i guess in lieu of our 100th episode we're gonna do a uh, a retrospective, or I guess going back over the last <laughs> 100 episodes and picking individually our top 10 <laughs> favorite movies that, that we covered. Yeah. Uh, and kind our of, top and, 10, yeah, yeah, ranking them and just going through and, and, and just kind of, re- the, how did you put it? You, you called it like the, the clip show or... Yeah, the Golden Girls clip show. Like, hey, Zach, remember when we talked about A Nightmare on Elm Street Part Three? <laughs> and we'll get we'll we'll get Boy Cried Wolf, our editor, who also, by the way, thank you, Boy Cried Wolf, uh, as as our editor. But we'll get him to do all that. It's just like, do you do you remember when this? And then slowly, yeah, like... right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it won't be that. We'll we'll, we'll be just be ranking them and discussing them. You won't have to sit through. <laughs> sections of the podcast you've already sat yeah. through <laughs> that was always a, a joke on old sitcoms that like you put together a clip show when you didn't have the budget to like you know write a full script so let's just have them sit in the house because yeah. we have that built because well, they were well yeah because it was <laughs> just, just like they yeah. were easy to produce like very cheap and you could just yeah. like 
that was a thing. And and it was always annoying when they did that for like finales of shows like Seinfeld did. There's like so much controversy over there because they had the trial at the end and it just like all the yeah. all the the people that they committed these past transgressions against came in and and they're just like <laughs> I like what's her face um, the the British actress uh, who was on Frasier who who was like she was the part of the oh bet. Jane leaves yeah, yeah. Cause, and she was just recalling how they had the bet about like who could go the longest right. without masturbating and then it it flashed back to that episode and, and showed her and just like come on do better. <laughs> Because, like, TV back then, they always did that. It's like, this is the finale. Like, give us, you know, something uh, I knew we weren't far from Melrose Place or Seinfeld in here. Well, we weren't even close to Melrose Place, but you just brought it up. But I don't think, (laughs) I don't know if Melrose Place ever did that. They. A clip show? No. Uh, It's harder to come by with. Oh, wait, you know what? I don't know if they did a clip show, but I definitely remember they had, like, a special night where in lieu of a regular episode, they did kind of what we're doing with uh, (laughs) the past hundred episodes, where they uh, ranked, they had the audience vote on like the 10 or 20, I can't remember which, Mm -hmm. most sensational moments uh, on the series thus far. And you watched from like 10 to one or 20 to one and yeah. Gotcha. I I love that we're we're like, we're like promoting this and we're just making it sound as awful as possible. It's just, we're just (laughs) just giving you the same shit that we've been doing this whole time. (laughs) So go support us. But we're ranking it. it. You haven't, you don't know our rankings yet. Yet. So that's the new incentive. <laughs> and there's there's always so much suspense when it comes to your rankings in particular because you because who knows because the turmoil really that you you go through it's it's like yeah, Sophie's choice of of movies with you. They're and, my babies. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's what's going on this month. So uh, please uh, head over to Patreon and uh, drop us your support over there. Greatly appreciated. Uh, I think that's that's all the the uh housekeeping that i have to talk about so yeah let's tell me what this this movie's about okay should it be like angelica houston (laughs) yeah (laughs) yes please yeah just shout shout the whole thing or i could just i could be her with the mask because she's much more composed like with the mask and i I, that won't that way boy croyd wolf won't have to like fight with my levels (laughs) Mm. Okay. okay When a recently orphaned boy named Deluc is taken to a seaside hotel in England by his grandmother as she also recuperates after an illness, a group of suspicious ladies hold a sort of convention on the hotel grounds. But are they really philanthropic do-gooders? Or are they the witches? Very nice. <laughs> Yo, you're always so unsure after you like you, you deliver this this great bit of, of voice acting, you're like, I don't know. Don't get don't get mad at me. <laughs> It's not my fault. I can't do it. You did it. You did it. You did a great job. <laughs> like, Thank you. Can you dig it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done like I haven't, like, you know, that's kind of like the jazz version. Because mm. <laughs> I can do her lines. But as far as, like, spitballing and improvising and saying other words, I, I, I hadn't rehearsed yeah. it. So well, my favorite thank, parts thank of the movie that. were when she was just... Because, you, like, you're right. When she, the, the mask is off, she's, you know, the this different thing full, and just, like, the different register. Throttle, yeah. But even, like, in the... There's, like, the scene when they're, like, going to sit down for dinner. And she's just yelling, like, her one assistant or whatever and she's just screaming at the top of her lungs that just like like just reprimanding her in front of everyone it's like there's like an entire dining room of people like trying to enjoy dinner you're just coming there you're just like get out of here like it's this it's so turned up this that's the thing like i forgot how unhinged this movie is yeah Uh, and and it's oh like all mostly because of angelica houston uh, but the right. scene where she pushes the baby stroller down okay. the hill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get into it. Because I, no, uh, cards on the table, fucking love this movie. It, it did before, do now, mm-hmm. even with all of the differences that I noticed being a huge aficionado. I think I had read the book three times before 
I even knew the movie was happening. And then when I saw the trailer for the movie, I, I saw the grandmother calling him Luke. And I'm like, he's just called my darling in the book. So I guess he needs to have a name because it might be weird if she only calls him my darling in the movie. Okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, And I'm looking at like, you know, I don't know, just like uh, Angelica Houston. I'm just kind of like, oh, wow, she looks great. She's got purple on her dress, though. And I remember she wore all black, just black in the book. You know, like just like minute little things that I think you could appreciate. But yeah. um, then... Uh, when I saw the movie, um, I, I remember I embraced it. I liked, particularly, I think the biggest change for me was the ending, which we'll get to. Um, but uh, I, I watched it so many times. I, it's one of those movies I just kind of know backwards and forwards in the vein of, say, Batman Returns or something like that. I've seen mm -hmm. it that many times. And, um, well, and I hadn't seen it because of reasons like that. Like, I don't watch it often because I don't have to. So watching it this time, I, I watched it with the love. I mean, the opening credits happen and they're sweeping over the mountains and even just that score coming in with the bum, 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 with like this lovely, almost ballroom-esque, you know, uh, waltz going, or is it a waltz? I don't know, but whatever the, 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 the tempo is. And then you just get the dun -dun 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 as the witch's title flies to you and you hear ah, ha, 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 ha. And, and then you're just over the mountains and it's amazing anyway okay so you know you've seen the movie but um so i'm i'm in it i'm going oh. and as the movie progresses i i stumble over quite a few blocks um that are big where i'm just kind of like yeah this makes no sense wow if i were making the movie i don't think i would have had the courage <laughs> to just kind of let this be a choice because it doesn't make any sense. And it, I think it also adds to the off the hook nature of it. But you, like you mentioned, everything about that sequence where Luke, and we're going to jump around a lot, I'm sure, but Luke is hiding in the room. That I thought was incredible, the way they recreated like the velvet gold chairs all facing in one direction everything mm -hmm. like that when i saw the movie i was like that is like the book except the screen is at the back of the room instead of the front of the room like it is in the movie in the book he's at the back and we know that they can't smell him because he hasn't showered in like three weeks or something and um uh we don't get that explanation here but once luke reveals himself and they all start chasing after him i feel like i don't remember a chase scene in the book i feel like they get him and immediately decide to give him the doses and he turns into a mouse. I could be misremembering. I didn't check. But because I yeah. feel like the chase that follows, the whole sequence, I love watching it. But I was like, this is the most unnecessary piece of cinema I've seen <laughs> in a long time. Because they're chasing him all over the place. They're, right off the bat, they chase him into like this room where there could be caterers or something, and you just see this like bevy of women, this tidal wave of them rushing and falling over each other to catch a boy. Mm -hmm. Nothing more suspicious in the world than that. And it's a fully windowed like room that they all escape into, and he manages to like run out of. And then like one even ungloved hand reaches out as he's leaping over the wall to like try and clutch him back and i'm like this is not low profile stuff i thought my zetterling his mother his grandmother told him you know witches don't kill people with like guns or knives that's for people who get caught and witches never get caught and i'm like by abducting a child in broad daylight <laughs> in plain view of anybody and then by the time we get to angelica houston uh, with the baby, again, I like that the baby starts crying and that she's holding her nose when she's like, you know, sitting there like kind of, you know, playing with it or whatever. And then when she sees Luke, she all of a sudden, again, high profile crime. Like these are crimes people would go to <laughs> jail for. Mm -hmm. Pushes a baby carriage, a pram uh, in England, down a mountain. <laughs> and the mother... It was in full view of the mother who was also kind of dozing. She but was she sleeping. Look back. She was sleeping. But she could always look back. And she woke up enough to realize that the baby was yeah. going down the thing. She could have seen in her periphery a figure in black, a woman with bangs, pale. <laughs> Did anybody see that this weekend? Yes, everybody noticed her. It's Angelica mm -hmm. Houston. And she's just screaming, <laughs> shrieking down. And all the witches are coming out. One witch is down there clapping her hands that aren't gloved at all. And she doesn't have ugly hands. And I'm like, okay, was that an oversight? Is that like a Michael Myers bleached hair, pink face? kind of thing or was she just out of sight of everybody because she was on the shoreline going yay 
<laughs> for no reason. And was that premeditated? Did they know? Are they psychic? What is going on? What am I even watching? And I was I started to spiral out of control. So I'm sorry I've been talking a long time. You say things now. No, that's cool. Um <laughs> It's there's definitely a, a level of this, and and we see this in a lot of kids' movies too, where the adults are presented as just being fucking stupid, and right. you know it's just like, and it, even in horror movies, like the parents, like they don't know shit. You know, speaking of Nightmare <laughs> on Elm Street, they don't know what's going on. So it's kind of I think that a lot of movies, especially in yesteryear, got away with that because it's just like we could show adults being ignorant to you know the the situations going around them especially with their children because Mm. it's more so these movies are being shown to us through the perspective of the children and the children you know it's like rugrats where just like we don't know what the hell the adults are doing they're just like in their own thing we're in this like fantastical (laughs) world so Mm. yeah i mean it is very jarring that the like 50 or however many of these women who are clearly not like even if they're, like physically just like have these deformities mentally are unhinged are just chasing after this this boy in plain view of everything even though that that room with the food was not like nobody was in there he breaks the glass he's running out there there's definitely people like and that was the thing i couldn't tell like who were actual civilians and who were witches but that right. that mother, she wakes up and she just sees all these other women like running towards the action, and it's just like <laughs> she he prevents the carriage, the pram from going over the yeah. the cliff, and then the mom catches up and she gets the baby, but she's not looking around at like the the lunatics around her who are like screaming at Luke as he's running off <laughs> as well. So it's yeah, there's a lot of questions, but it's like again, you have like the adults in this movie. Even, like, the way that they're presented. Like, you have Rowan Atkinson as the, I guess, the, yes. the hotel manager who is, yeah. you know, he's as a character in and of himself. You've got the the parents of Bruno who, uh-huh. they're like, their characters in, in and of themselves, like, they're in their own movie. That's the thing. Like, everybody yeah. in this movie is in their own movie. Um, <laughs> it's the same movie, but they're just, like, they're completely unaware of what's going on with like anyone else. And I think that that's the does... same tonally, but yeah. there are all these threads you can follow throughout the movie. Yeah, yeah I agree. It's Did like you notice I, simultaneously? I, I don't know if you're a, a, a fan of Downton Abbey, but the, the head chef was, yes. um, what's yes. his, the, the butler Carson, or maybe I'm thinking of the wrong name, but the, the, the head I butler. I can't in, remember in... his name either, but he was the butler. I remember. Yeah. yeah he ran, no. uh, the household. Yeah. yeah. And I've seen him in, um, Haunted Honeymoon uh, with Gene Wilder, speaking of Willy Wonka, and uh, Gilda Radner. He was in that as um, the magician. I, I always remember him because he has such a nasal voice. But uh... Jim Carter. Uh, <laughs> Jim Carter. Okay. Char- Charles Carson is the, the Downton Abbey character. Here he played the head chef Carson. who had, who had the, the Luke, I guess, run up his, his leg and was just... <laughs> I love yes. the gag. He just like oh. hands the bowl over to Rowan Atkins, and he's just like keeps stirring it. <laughs> there are so, and then many... he's just like get those get those pants off of him. <laughs> I mean, there are so many brilliant English actors in this who are just like kind of playing slapstick. Another yeah. one for me because I totally noticed him, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, another one for me was also Brenda Blethyn, who plays Mrs. Jenkins, Bruno's mother. Mm-hmm. She is an Oscar-nominated actress. She was nominated a few years later in the '90s for Secrets and Lies. And I think uh, she was also nominated for Best Supporting Actress in Little Voice, which starred Jane Horrocks, who plays um, Irvy, uh, basically the Grand High Witch's, you know, kind of... uh, Bitch. uh, The witch bitch. bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for finding the the appropriate word for me. I was going to say secretary, but... (laughs) But you're right. They're both true. But um, and yeah, that starred her uh, as as a woman who could do impressions of everybody. And Brenda Blethyn was something in that that got nominated. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. I, I don't remember that movie. I haven't seen it in so long. But um, anyway, and I've seen her do. She's an incredible dramatic actress. Brenda Blethyn is, and I had forgotten she was in this movie. So to see her with like this almost Lucille Ball 
uh, hennaed up like, you know, orange hair because she's usually a brunette and seeing her <laughs> just do these takes where, you know, like she's holding up these magnifying glass, uh, you know, esque uh, glasses to, to peer at Bruno mm-hmm. and seeing her scream her bloody lungs out and pull her skirt up over her knees because the rats are all around her. And I'm like, God, this woman <laughs> can like can make you weep or can make you terrified or can make you and can obviously also make you laugh your ass off. So, so, so many talented people. Yeah. And this was the movie that I saw so many of them. I think all of them pretty much for the first time. This was first Angelica Houston for me as a kid. This was mm-hmm. first Rowan Atkinson before Mr. Bean. I knew him from this. So when I saw Mr. When Bean did, finally, I was like. When did Mr. Bean yeah. come out though? He might have already been doing it prior to this. And yeah. maybe that's why he got the part of the movie, frankly. But I didn't. he didn't come into my periphery until I had HBO when I was like 11 or 12. There, so Mr. Bean, there's apparently only yeah. 15 episodes mm. in total outside of the God. movies um, or sure, movie. Sure. I don't know how many there are. Movie. And, and I, I mean, I remember growing up with Mr. Bean because we had the – the the VHS tapes uh, that you could buy. So like they had like multiple episodes on them. So I probably, I must've seen everything. We might've even had all of them. Um, But at the time, like, I don't know, they they might've even been five years old or whatever, like whenever it came out. I mean, it looks like it probably was around the same time. Like if not the late eighties, then then the beginning of the Um, nineties. But it's just so weird to like, like think back to that. And like, that's, that's all there really was, which is, it's a testament to, (laughs) to Rowan Atkinson's abilities that he played this character and like only did like, you know, X number of shows Mm -hmm. that it like in your mind, even as like, like as an adult, but as a child, Mm -hmm. just think like, there were so many episodes, there's like hundreds of Mr. Bean episodes. It's like ab fab. There's only like, like a season is like six episodes long or whatever. And yeah, there was only, they only made one like every five years. Well, like outside of like the first three years. Um, Mm -hmm. So I don't, yeah. Like the, the early nineties is like this, it's like lost in time. So there's just so much happened (laughs) yet, yet not enough at the same time. (laughs) <laughs> well, what's lucky is, I mean, if anybody doesn't know what we're talking about with Mr. Bean and you have access to Tubi TV at all, uh, check it out because the entire series is on um, yeah. Tubi for free with ads. I just watched a few over the holidays because he has a Christmas, Merry Christmas, or Christmas with Mr. Bean, uh-huh. or Merry Christmas, Mr. Bean. Yeah, I think it's yeah. Merry Christmas, Mr. Bean. And oh my God, the bit he does with the manger scene, that's worth the price of admission alone and it's yeah. you don't pay any admissions so there you uh know. when are we going to start to see some of this to be sponsorship money right <laughs> with all, with all the times you mention it yeah <laughs> I have connections at Amazon. I can figure it out because I believe Tubi is a division of Amazon, but like just more I with have, ads because they I had a lot no of the idea. same, a lot of the same product. But I don't know. Maybe I can't. I watched. It. I watched two I movies on. I believe it was Tubi. It was. Um, the t- that terror train remake that they apparently there's two oh. of they did a sequel i just saw the first one uh which was not that and then um oh, there's also another movie with melissa barrera uh from screen mm-hmm. five and six um bed rest i think it was called she was like it was like one of those like movies where like there's she's pregnant and there's like a haunted child like there's a ghost child i don't know i it, I didn't like it either, but um, <laughs> that's that's my experience with Tubi. There, you're like Tubi, and I'm like Tubi. <laughs> yeah, you know, you need to you need to find some more quality products on sure. that platform. <laughs> sure, <laughs> there's plenty to choose from. You just need to you need to scroll, keep you scrolling to, a little you bit. You'll find around. something. Yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> um, okay, well, you, I mean, you you showed your hands uh, uh, what you think about this yeah. movie. I. Uh, I was really into it until the the, the mice stuff. Uh, so, like, just over the halfway mark, like, once he got turned into a mouse, and then it just, those scenes just felt like they went on so long. Nothing was happening. It was just, like, constant running around. It got really tedious really fast. Oh, my God. And it, it was really okay. hard. To, the only, and then from that point on, the only time that I was, like, really kind of, brought back into it is whenever Angelica Houston would come on the screen, which was so few and far between um, that I was just, you know, I, I, meh, you know, (laughs) 
I okay. I'd say three 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 out of five for me. <laughs> And there we are with the star rating. Yeah, but, uh, my letterbox. <laughs> right, right, right. Of course. Um, no, for me, of course. You know, I uh, just uh, just to be different. No, um, I I I'm absolutely enchanted by the puppetry of those mice, particularly the mice in the close-ups where they just look like great big stuffed animals with the most beautiful big black eyes. Mm. And those two. This is the thing. I already liked both of those little boys, the performances they were giving when they were little boys. It's uh, Jason Fisher and as Luke and as Bruno. I didn't write down his name, but I'll find it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But Bruno Jenkins, the kid who plays him. Um, I already liked what they were doing a lot, especially Luke. The, what a quirky kid. I just love... The, the, the way he looks at his grandma while she's telling him about the witches and the way his finger gets caught in his glasses and he starts to kind of like pull it away and he can't but then he goes ah oh, you know and just like looks at his finger and then just goes back to listening to his grandma and just like the I mean, awkward glass like they're just like magnifying glasses almost with, and, and the hair yeah. kind of going dippity do every they're which kind way, of you know, giving like... me <laughs> bubbles from trailer park boys i don't huh Maybe it's a Canadian I, thing. Yeah. Okay, I didn't watch it. That's true. Neither did I, but I know of it. But it just, yeah, like just like the the, the glasses, because when he took them off, like he looked completely different. Uh, so oh, it yeah. was, yeah, it was. They're just way too big for his face, and it made him kind of like it made him look like his eye, like almost cross-eyed at, at certain points, because yeah. like they were so. And it I, made his eyes look really close together. Yeah, so I loved that, and I loved, like, you know, Bruno seemed to perfectly capture, like, the, the Bruno of the book, that just kind of, like, insistent, you know, haughty kind of, like, thing, but also, you know, like, not outside reality, like, yeah. it was, it, I was just kind of like, okay, that works. I feel but like Bruno those... is yeah. a precursor yeah. to the character in Matilda who had to, was forced to eat the cake. <laughs> you know I don't about? remember his name, but I know yeah. who you're talking about, yeah. yes. Um I can't find this kid's name for the life of me. But anyway, I'll keep scrolling. Yeah. But um, the thing is, I thought I already like liked with them and what they were doing and that I was fine with it. And then I see hear them as like voice actors. And they're tiny little voices <laughs> coming out of these tiny little mice. And all of the, those are my favorite lines of theirs are those little exchanges that they have. Where are just kind of like, uh, don't eat the cheese, Bruno. Remember, we have two enemies now, humans and cats. Crikey, we've got three cuts at home. They'll have to go. You know, just like the way, oh my God. I love, again, I was fascinated. Like you talk about the running around and everything like that. I couldn't stop being fascinated because I did see the the reimagining okay. <laughs> of the witches. I remember very little. I do believe that if not the entirety of the mouse stuff in that movie, at least the bulk of it is CGI. As you know, it's to be expected. Yeah. And it missed something for me. That's how I, I think I felt the way you feel about like watching those little mouse boys watching. Because they also introduced like a mouse girl voiced by Kristen Chenoweth just to be different. And I was like, okay, well, this is different. Um, but watching this one, I'm fascinated when I'm watching real mice do the little stunts that they have to do. Like all the times the little Luke kind of orange mouse... Also, both the fact that both of their mouse coats like kind of match their hair, I love that. But that so the, like this little kind of like golden orange uh, uh, mouse, uh, this this latte mouse, if you will, pumpkin latte mouse, is like scrambling around and like falling off wires and climbing up things. And I'm worried about him. I'm genuinely worried about him because I'm like, oh, I hope that mouse was okay. Did, well, know? he got his. <laughs> part of his tail chopped off yeah and he even said so so like how did what did that affect on him as a human or was that like restored when when he was turned back at the end we'll have to take a look at his rear end and the movie doesn't go that far at the end of the movie oh. <laughs> like maybe 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 because it's something he doesn't have <laughs> Uh, maybe it doesn't matter. Well, anymore. he's kind of like he's know. very like flippant about it because like the grandma's just like They're, you're plating, or he's just like it's fine. I'm, yeah, you know, it's no big deal. <laughs> it just it's has just imaginary. Just well, my, it's just like it's just like the way that like the snake knife. the snake can like <laughs> materialize and then disappear. Like it's just it's not it's is it there? Is there really a snake? Um, oh my god, well, that it, woman, that that first snake, witch. The, oh, that witch. She. I mean, that she was just sinister. Like. Who cares if she's a witch or not? Like that, she was 
insane. And if yeah. any if any kid is going to be approached by by someone like that, I would fully yeah. expect them to be like get the fuck away from like grandma like come get this get this woman away from me because she right. was not like, subtle strangers at all. Are creepy enough. Yeah, yeah. Oh no she, no no like, no no. Well. well. I mean, I adore, because I remember that scene in the book, too, and I remembered her having a grin. It was described, and I even remember the illustrations that whoever, I can't remember the name of the person who did the Raoul Dahl illustrations uh, for that book, but drew her in such a way that her smile opened, like, like there was more space between the top lip and the bottom lip than there were between the corners of her mouth. So she was just kind of like, you know, like grimacing at Luke, offering him uh, chocolate and a snake and everything like that. Yeah. What but, a weird combination, uh, that, that's too. Another... <laughs> that's what little boys like, <laughs> chocolate and snakes. That's how you get me out of a tree. Well, also, I mean, again, you've got these English actors who train in voice and speech and everything like that. And I just love the register that that witch. I always assumed she was the high witch because grandma in I think they only ever talk about the grand high witch in the book. But in the movie, she says there's a high witch of each country and the ruler of them all is the grand high witch. Hassan. Mm. But um I always assume because she's the one who took notes <laughs> in the in the ballroom and she seemed to be the one who was the most vocal, like, we will do better. We will do much better. Um, and all of a sudden she wasn't English anymore. She was <laughs> whatever the Grand High Witch is. Yeah. But um, just her, again, her vocal register when she has her hideous, you know, her, her human face mask. Um, and she goes up and she's just kind of like, um, what a magnificent treehouse. Did you build it yourself? I mean, just like kind of posh, but definitely sinister. That's a really good word to use to describe her. And just like, I've got something for you here. Something I think you'll like. You know, like like punching every K to sound as like, uh, as just like e e e evil and, and, and imposing a as possible. And I also love the fact that she looks so pissed off when she walks away after him finally calling grandma works. And she looks at him like, fine, you don't want my snake. I don't want to give him to you. <laughs> like, what did you expect? He's going to be like happy <laughs> to like climb down the tree. And I'm sure some kids maybe would. Oh God, that reminds me, Zach. One time I was delivering in a neighborhood and these kids came up to me, parentless, not an adult in sight. And they just said, can we come in your van? <laughs> I'm worried about the youth. What did you, what did, what did you say to that? Like, did you... I said, absolutely not. And you shouldn't be asking me for that. Do your parents know where you are? And they just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> they lost interest. I was boring. Yeah. Because <laughs> I had their best interest at heart. But I was just like, I, you couldn't, I, I was not that child. Sure, I've got child? candy in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> like, God, what if I was a horrible person? Yeah. You know? Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, I just kept doing that for about the next hour. Just going, oh, God, are these... What's wrong with them? Or maybe maybe they were witches and they wanted to well, kill Well, yeah, them. that was my second thought. Like maybe they were, it was like a reverse situation and they were the uh, little monsters. <laughs> and you would have been like, sure, come in. And then they would have just like Oh, God. Eaten your and that would have been the end of me. Yeah. So yeah. that's why you don't invite kids into your van, folks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the only reason why. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so that witch who I always deemed high witch, I forget what she's billed as, and I can't find, oh, she's the woman in black, and her name is Anne Lampton, good for her. I don't think I've ever seen her in anything else, not that I, like, noticed. The, because the I actor noticed. name or the character? The actor, okay. Anne Lampton. I, Lampton. I don't think I've seen her in anything else. And Bruno, if anybody cares, is played by Charlie Potter. The only reason I couldn't find him is his IMDb profile photo is him in full mouse makeup. When he's transforming, oh, really? in like the mid in the midway when he's when it's yeah. still a person well, he's, and he's doing that. Well, because I was looking him up because yeah. uh, like I, his he only has three credits. He was in Hook, yeah. and that was like his last movie. I won't, who did he play? In? He must have been just in the background. I don't remember. I, I didn't. Like it's been so long. Because I would have remembered that, that voice. I've seen that movie too many times, so I would have yeah, yeah. I would have remembered him. I think. Yeah. But um, so no, I love the mice. I love just like watching their little 
choreography and uh, just wondering like how did they capture this like how long did it take so even when i'm even even though it may not exactly hook me into the action of the film yeah. the making of it which, i can always kind of fall sorry back which on actor are you talking about by. for bruno jenkins oh okay Tony no Potter. i was talking about i was talking about luke oh you were talking about luke okay yeah he's he, oh, he, he was, was in, in he was in uh, <gasps> uh parenthood and hook this is only two other credits. Oh. I think I remember his face somewhere in one of the reaction shots. He must have been one of the Lost Boys. He must have been, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't remember which one, though. He's probably full... Oh, my God. He's full grown now because he's basically the same age I was. He's... Well, he's born movie, in 1980. 80, so... Or, sorry. Yeah, yeah and 1980. I was, I was... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he... Um, it, which was a trip because I remember when I read the book, I thought I was too old for it. My mom bought it for me, and I was just kind of like, "Oh, a Roald Dahl book, okay, you know, I'll read yeah. this kids thing." When did when did <laughs> Ra- what, what? How do we say is it? Roald Dahl? I say Roald Dahl. Raul. That's how I say it. How it's do not you Raul say Raul it? Or Ra- it's well, it's R O A L D. Roald is how I say yeah. it. Yeah, like Ronald with no N. Yeah, okay. Roald. What? Yeah, because when did, when did he <laughs> pass away? I don't know. Because I was wondering, like, did he have any... Okay, so he died November 29th, 1990. So this, he probably saw the movie. Um, oh, my God. But, um, no, he was... He did... Because uh, he did work on movies, so I wasn't sure if he... Mm-hmm. For this movie, if he just, like... It was an adaptation of his book, or he did it. Because he did the screenplay for You Only Live Twice, the James Bond movie. Oh, yeah. Oh my God. That was and that was nineteen sixty seven. Oh, I love I've only the seen, James Bond movies. So I like I've I know you seen do. All of them. I've only seen the first three, and I had to duck out. I know I need to stay the course wow. and see the rest of them, and I will. But was no, it just I, was it like, too uh, outdated for you? Too problematic? Well, no, it wasn't. Well, I mean, kind of, but not even that. Like the first one, I thought was just boring, and then the second one, I don't even remember. And then the third one is the one, Goldfinger is the one with Pussy Galore, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I liked Pussy Galore a lot until his charm kind of like oh, oh, worked on her. I was just, I liked them fighting yeah. more. And kind of, oh, not even fighting, well, but, you know, was, she was like wits. full-on <laughs> lesbian in the novel. So Oh, I would have they... loved that. <laughs> See, that's what was missing. But I don't know, but I don't I, I don't know if that. like I haven't I didn't read the book, so I don't know if he still converted her. Um, oh, well, like probably. it's it's, it's yeah. Ian Fleming, so probably. Um, Gross. But uh, <laughs> no, because like you only live twice. That was it. It was like an original idea. Like they didn't adapt it from the book, so mm. he would have like full on just like uh, written that that entire concept for that. And that that and you're one fond was of that script. Yeah. Hmm? You're, you're fond of that script. No, I mean, I like I said, I, I, I love, I mean, most of the movies. But that one, he, um, th- the, I guess the, the problematic thing in You Only Live Twice is that Uh-oh. towards the end of the movie, uh, James Bond, so Sean Connery, in this case, um, is infiltrating, like he has, he's going undercover in a Japanese fishing village. And he has to like, he's yeah. getting married to a, like a Japanese bride. And they're like doing this whole thing where they're going undercover to like investigate this volcano where that's like the villain slayer is. So in order to pull this off, they make him undergo this, I guess like transformation. Like they, they give him makeup and like bleach his chest hair and like wax him so he resembles a Japanese man. And oh get him to marry a, like a Japanese woman, and they go on their honeymoon. And seriously, it does not oh. fucking matter at all because, like, within the course of ten minutes, like it just mm-hmm. it, it's gone. Like he's just back to Sean Connery. <laughs> so it just like it it, oh it really I don't know what happened, but it's Leave it's kind it to of to roll doll yeah. to write the racially insensitive you know yeah. thing <laughs> yeah. because he did it, with the initial release of charlie and the chocolate factory it's pretty common knowledge now and yeah. then it got since got revised by him uh, but you can still find old editions of that original charlie and the chocolate factory where the oompa loompas were their story was terrible and yeah. hor- hideously insensitive if we ever cover that movie we can cover that but <laughs> <laughs> no i don't think this is already this is already kind of 
bending the limits of, uh, of <laughs> yeah. the horror genre. <laughs> but um, no, I think like it's it's so crazy and, and cringy, but it's just it's so funny that literally like ten minutes, like it's just it's. I don't know if it's melted off. I don't know what the fuck happened, but he's, it, it's like, what was the point? Why? Why'd you do that? Yeah. Um, and, and again, like, who knows? Like, I mean, you you made this correlation to Willy Wonka, so it very well could have been his uh, invention in his mind. But I mean, you know, you know studios right. could have been like, well, let's do this. Like, the movie takes place in Japan. Let's Let's have him, you know, become Japanese. So. Everybody was on board, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. but um, <laughs> question. <laughs> oh, I How still, but I still about... fucking love them. But yeah, go on. Okay, cool. Uh, of course you do. Of yeah. course you do. Um, question in terms of just like, how do you feel about the uh, the telltale signs of like how you detect a witch? In terms of like you know the eyes and the gloves and the wigs and the toes. Well, I <laughs> I liked it because it. That part of it, like when he was like hiding behind the the little room divider and was yeah. watching it, because that felt very much like like I don't remember the book, but it, it mm. felt like this this would be stuff that like was specifically in the book and like the way that it's presented on on screen. Who directed this, by the way? Uh, his name is Nicholas Rogue. Yeah, there's R O E G. I really appreciated the. The you like just the way that we do get these like extreme close ups of mm-hmm. things so, like they were taking off their shoes. We saw like the the square feet and all that and like and like the eyes, like we would get like close ups of that because and I was actually yeah. just talking about this with Eric today, um, of just how movies nowadays here I go. Here I'm going off on this rant. Oh, okay. Movies nowadays, it feels like there is no um, there's no distinction where we're like, when do we use like a wide shot? When are we kind of like exploring the scope of the surroundings? And when do we do like mm. ex- extreme close ups of things? We just don't get those very often. It feels like there's one uniformed distance from like the subject and the camera. And that's just how we see a lot of things. Like there's nothing is like intensely it, like it, on the subject or away from it to to get like a different perspective. And it's boring. It's like, and, and it just feels like everything looks like that nowadays. Whereas like you see a movie like this and there's the, like the, the cinematography is like interesting. Like it's fun. Like even like yeah. we're talking about the opening credits where we're just flying through, you know, it's like they did it in the craft too. When we're like soaring <laughs> through the sky at the beginning. Because yeah. that's, that's witch shit. But, um, witch is. Yeah, yeah, but no, it's just like there's, there's something about that because it just really puts emphasis on something. That's why it felt almost like you're, you're in the novel when you're seeing things and they're just like, this is where it's appropriate to like have an up close shot. And I forget what the line was because um, uh, Eric brought it up, but it's just when, when Bruno's like eating the chocolate and it does this like extreme close up on Angelica Houston's face. Uh, I'm just like just you like are in of... for a tweet. Yeah, and it just... <laughs> we all are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like stuff like like when 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 is it appropriate to to do that? And you know when do we just do like yeah. regular distance from mm-hmm. the camera? And I feel like mm-hmm. that's just it, I don't, I don't know if it's just like like a, a lack of vision in mm. in films or or it's just sort of like no this is we don't want to upset people or we don't want to like we don't want to fuck them too much up with with moving in or out or changing a perspective yeah and also unsettling people like yeah. again like i said this film with adults it seemed to unsettle even more so than the children which i think was mostly true of actually willy wonka and the chocolate factory as a film also i remember certainly being afraid of things in that movie when I was a really little boy, but being able to handle it, because yeah. I, I never wanted to stop move, w- stop watching it. I never wanted to turn it off. And my parents were never the kinds of parents who were just kind of like, this is too much for you. They always looked at my reaction, you know? And if I was scared, they opened the door for me. They, 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 they were raising me. They basically said like, are you okay? Do you want to keep watching? You know, stuff like that. And I can like... Guess, guess for myself like can I handle this yes am I still interested in finding out what happens yeah so okay let's let's write it out let's see if it gets any worse and it usually wouldn't and I usually come out the other end knowing okay I can get through something like that yeah um 
And so, I mean, uh, everything about that mentality within filmmaking about like, maybe not even intentionally pushing boundaries per se, but about just depicting something very specific in a very specific manner that you don't, that, I don't know, if you have references to other things, they're oblique. They're not, you know, uh, references that, you know, that like, <laughs> you're going to love this. Like in a, you know, your, your run-of-the-mill Blumhouse movie where you're going to see a reference and you're going to see it in big block letters and know, oh, that's something from this other thing that used to happen before. I get yeah. that reference. You know, just like blatant and, com yeah. and unnuanced and just complete with a lack of artfulness yeah well, about i mean but, it, you know but it's why just are we doing that like why service. why are there references rather than like why don't we just try to recreate that or do something of our own like it just feels like everything like is a reminder yeah. of uh, a reminder of things that when they were better um and i just it's just a it's just a horrible way to do things and yeah. i mean on your on the the uh, what you were saying about earlier, just like what uh, what was appropriate to watch and 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 this not because I didn't. I mean this this is a dark movie in terms of like like I remember mm -hmm. watch when I watched it just kind of like oh this isn't like Matilda or even like Willy Wonka because even though Willy Wonka like has some some moments that are just like oh it's pretty like innocuous for the most part um the actual the creepiest thing in the movie which is like super unintentional is when the candy shop owner is singing and then he kind of like goes into this like lower tone and, and he it's just like what's he gonna do to those children um and then it just it doesn't <laughs> happen no earthly way of knowing what direction we are going yeah i know that part. yeah um, um and but, even that was Thrilling, fascinating. Yeah, Gosh, but I mean, like this, you know? this, this has like it's it's a very, and I, I don't know, maybe it's the time because I feel like movies in the late '80s and early '90s, like that's when you had a lot of like action movies were like really like ultra violent. You had mm. like the horror genre was kind of. I don't think that n not enough people were watching horror at that time. So like when horror movies were made, there there were it didn't feel like there was really any limitations. And things mm. were, like, very extreme in some mm. cases. Like, I'm even thinking as far back as, like, Halloween uh, 6. So I guess, like, mm. pre-Scream, when you had, like, there's some, like, crazy shit in that. Like, that guy's head blows up. And you had the not Danielle Harris getting pushed onto the, the, the yeah. thresher. And just, like, yeah. that was, like, unsettling. It's gross. So it felt like... Things were dark. Like we're coming from like like Silence of the Lambs, Candyman, where it's just like themes were just like tonally like really dark. Everything felt like Twin mm -hmm. Peaks, uh, right. coming out at that time as well. So it just it, it felt like things were bleak, but in a way that it just seemed normal. Like that this is just life. Like it's almost like people kind of embraced that life is like a horrible like the earth is a horrible place and there's just there's darkness what is the it's the it's the antithesis of the line that judy greer says in halloween when she's like the world is a wonderful place with with lemon drops and and rainbows yeah, and, and puppies and, and puppy kisses <laughs> and i will not hats. have your neuroses and blah blah, blah blah like get your gun out of here <laughs> <laughs> so, understood completely yeah, yeah so the world at the, in the in the early 90s it's just like everyone was like a laurie strode 2018 where it's just like maybe not that extreme but it's just like yeah things are pretty fucked up be on the lookout you know because because mm -hmm. i even remember like going like being a child in that time like there were like we were obviously told like don't do things like there were there was um what's it called the uh not the the Crime Stoppers, like the uh, America's Most Wanted, whatever is it, Jim Walsh, whatever, yeah, right, where yeah, that I yeah. mean that was like a big deal, um, and even like cops and just like watching mm -hmm. these shows on 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 Fox, and it was just sort of like yeah. it everything was kind of like instilling a fear into mm -hmm. into the minds of people, but it was doing it in a very like palatable way where it was just like it's fear and it's entertainment. So X Files. Yeah. So I I feel like people yeah. were very savvy to things. Like you just you knew like don't do shit like this, but the parents were like, they know and we'll let them do shit. Yeah. Because like I would go we lived on the edge of a ravine. 
Um, and it's like, that could be like a, like a setting for like any like crazy Stephen King novel. And I would right. like just go sometimes, like whether it was like with friends or on my own, I would just like go out on adventures. And I was probably like 10 or younger and I would just right. go, I wouldn't know where I was going. I would just sort of like retrace my steps back or just try to figure things out. Cause we didn't obviously have, you know, maps built into our phones. Like we didn't have phones. Right. So it was just no. more of like, where am I? And how am I going to get there? It was just, it was just like the, the adventure. Um, yeah. So we're always doing crazy things. And I don't think that anything was like really off limits. Like I've said this before, like, I don't think that I was ever censored from watching things that had violence in them. I think that like that was very welcome. Like, like almost like it was okay. It was like, it was the things that were maybe had like sexual adult humor. Those were the things that like parents didn't want their kids to watch. So those were the mm-hmm. things. I remember one time, like my stepdad was watching The Simpsons and he's, and I came in and I'm like, oh, cool. And he's like, he turned it off. And he's like, you're too young for this. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Oh, dear um, God. But yeah, and there was, there was just, you know, certain things. And I think like when I became a teenager, they were maybe more scrutinizing of just like what I watched, but they couldn't, they couldn't like control what I was going to see right. outside of, yeah. outside of the home. But I mean, like for the most part, like things were just, like parents would just let their kids do whatever. And there wasn't like, there wasn't a sense of danger. Cause it was just like, they knew that like kids, kids are smart enough. They know shit. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, you know, you mentioned the story about the, the, those kids that asked you to go in their van. And it's almost like, have we gone to a point where we have like coddled our youth so much where they're not even just because they haven't experienced you know, it's like, for example, you put padding on everything to protect a child, like a baby, from yeah, hitting yeah, themselves yeah. really hard. <laughs> and that lets them know that, like, oh, we can just, like, run into things willy-nilly because it's it's just going to be a soft little, ooh, like, boop. Yeah, yeah. Um, whereas, right. like, if you don't have that, you let the kid run into something, oh, you know, cry it out. It's just like, right. what did we As learn? As opposed to the instruments of torture that we were raised yeah. on in the playground. Absolutely. Yeah. and then metal, that <laughs> baking in the sun. Yeah. And so you're learning. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, allowing, like, children to learn things through, like, I guess, osmosis. Is that, like, would that be the, the correct term? <laughs> of just... Um, if... It's yeah, kind of, but yeah. I mean, but trial and error. Tr- trial and error is what I feel more, like yeah. I was raised with. And I could have been raised with it even more so. Like, I, in, a, in some ways, I remember even as a child thinking, I, I think I can handle a little bit more than this. My parents are really worried about me. And my parents yeah. were not coddling at all. But there were some times where they, my mom loved to tell me over and over again as I was growing up, uh, ther- I'm in a therapy session now. Uh, but she yeah. would just loved to tell me, she loved to apologize to me for me having grown up so quickly. And she was telling me this like in grade school and in like middle school. And I'd be like, are you kidding? Like, you still have to drive me places. I still can only, like, meet friends, like, at the mall or at an amusement park. Yeah. Like, someplace that's deemed safe where, you know, if I go missing, people are going to, you know, it's enclosed and people are going to know at least be able to, like, ask people, did you see this kid? And everything like, you know, I'm not, yeah. like walking I'm, I'm not wandering <laughs> the, the i live right by the mountains but i never wandered them alone or anything like that and if i had i probably they probably would have sent me with someone just so in case one of yeah. us got hurt the other one can run home and go like he got hurt but <laughs> it's like you got a anyway. lot of you, you, don't worry you got a lot of work to do still but it, it, it always seemed like other people <laughs> like other like adults were more concerned with other people's children than like than right. parents were of their own children at that time. And now it's like the exact opposite. <laughs> like other people don't like, oh, you have kids? Like whatever. Uh, don't put them near me. <laughs> um, at least that's how I would be. No, no, no. I remember because I, um, I, don't, I don't know who it was where like I had to, I was like probably like 13 or 14 or maybe even 15. Uh, and we were just staying or like I was staying with someone who were like friends of, of my parents and they had all these movies on VHS and they're like, here, help yourself to these movies. And then they were like looking through them and they'd be like, oh, except for that one. Cause I guess it was like, had a R rating on it. And I think it was like The Saint, like with Elizabeth Shue. And I was- <laughs> And Val Kilmer. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and oh I was, God. cause I was like, I want to watch that one. And they're, and they're just like, no, we need to ask your parents. Like we need to, get permission from them. I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? 
I didn't yeah. say that, but could you imagine? <laughs> like, oh, you. Oh, your you attitude know how to was. Yeah, yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, yeah. And then they're like, "Yeah, that's fine. You can watch that." Um, but there was. <laughs> it, it, it's interesting because, like, in this movie that we've like kind of wandered away from talking about <laughs> is that the relationship between the the grandma and yeah. and grandson is very much like of this sort of like. You do what you got to do. You know, like, we even see that mm-hmm. at the beginning where, like, the parents are actually the ones who are just like, I don't know if I like these stories about the, like, talking about witches. Yeah. And it's just like, don't worry, we won't. They leave and just like, okay, here's the rest of it. So it's almost like this, like, and, the, yeah. the cool grandparents, just like the cool mom. And I even Absolutely. remember, like, my grandma uh, was always kind of, like, would do things. They're just like, here's some, here's some treats. Here's some sugar. Don't worry about right. it. Like, don't, you know Um, because it was fun it's it's sort of like we can now we have the capability of um, you know our kids put us through hell growing up so we're going to fuck with them with through their kids yeah I mean, I, I, I think I, if you're lucky, fortunate enough to be raised with like a grandparent who can kind of like be that for you without like kind of like exposing you to, you know, the evils of the world before you are ready to digest them. Like, I think I had a nice balance. I was just talking actually with Boy Cried Wolf about my grandmother, my mother's mother, who um, was uh, very much, I mean, She'd watch a Barbara Streisand concert with me, and she'd watch uh, Age of Innocence, you know, the Martin Scorsese love movie, the only love story, like, he really ever made with me. But she also loved, like, the grittiest horror and the and the the most exploitative action film, and she'd just always have her arms folded over her tummy and just go, oh, my, you know, at the most, like, explicit mm-hmm. sex scene, you know? Mm-hmm. It was delightful. She could, she could take it. She knew I could take it. Yeah. It was never about, like, should you be watching this? It was just, like... We're watching this. Yeah. We're family. We one got of, this. You know, if one you can't of my handle it, you can last leave. memories <laughs> of my grandmother was because I would routinely, like on the weekends, like especially if like my mom and stepdad like were went out of town or whatever, doing their own thing, I would yeah. be left with my grandmother, and it would be like Friday night, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Like I guess it it aired. It didn't air on Tuesdays when it did in the states. We'd get it on Fridays, so I would go over there and we would watch it. And she would watch it with me, and, and she was just like, what is this? And, like, she was, like, interested in it, but also, like, very judgy at the same time. Um, oh, but it was wow. just, like, fun. But, yeah, just, like, sitting there watching, yeah. I think it was, like, season two of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And that's, like, one of my last memories of her because we, like, we moved away uh, shortly after, and then she passed away. Um, so it's just, like, it's hanging out with your, your grandparents. Like, it's just such a special time in in your life because it's just like it's i mean there's some people who are fortunate enough to have young grandparents who you know they spend a a lot of their adult life with uh but that just wasn't the case for me and i just i remember i spent so much time with my grandmother like in in those like years like especially like in the like early 90s that you know most i like we probably i don't know if we watched any horror per se but we would watch like procedurals uh especially because she was like into stuff like that where there was like some dark gruesome content that would happen and it just like that's that's almost like a gateway for me to just like be be able to see that it's just so yeah i appreciate i appreciate grandparents for that and i appreciate like my grandmother for that and i appreciate the grandmother in this movie for that um yeah um her name uh the character the character's name is never used except for the last name i believe but i always hear it wrong because they call her like they kind of say it like you know like when they when she answers the door and when they they're going to tell her that the parents have uh you know been killed in a wasn't it helga and um, her first name is Helga, but nobody okay. ever uses it in the movie. That none, not that I could remember. I listened. No, I, time, no, I, I heard him IMDb. say Helga. Who said Helga? I think I never heard anybody say it Helga. It might have. It might have been in the in the flashback, like when they're telling the story at the beginning with her friend, who who went missing, and then the, and then her being in the painting. Oh, that's right, Helga. Have some cake. Oh yeah. my God, when she's a little girl, they call her Helga. Yeah. Okay, and then two times there's two moments where she calls where she's called. I think it's. They're saying Frau Ebersham. Hmm. 
and but they say it real fast so i always just thought they were calling her rawisha so i thought that was her name like hey rawisha yeah. but um, <laughs> but she's norwegian but um my zetterling this was my first exposure to her as an actor too and she uh, i just looked her up because i hadn't seen her in anything else but my mother said she was like notorious and she's like yeah she's out there and i was like as what and she never really answered so i looked it up and she's just like on, I'll just read a bit of her Wikipedia here. Having gained a reputation as a sex symbol in dramas and thrillers, she was equally effective in comedies and was active in British television in the 1950s and 60s. So who knows? Had her, had there been one less Bond girl, it could have been my Zetterling in there, <laughs> it being like some kind of sex pot, yeah. teasing you know your James Bond there. But um, anyway, she's awesome. And one thing that, in alignment with like what we're talking about with our own grandmothers, that's one thing that I really, really love about the way this movie opens, is we open with that voiceover. My Zetterling is like a master storyteller, like wonderful bit of casting and wonderful bit mm-hmm. performance, like all of her efforts. The way she, it's, all, it's, it's, it's not ASMR, but it's akin to ASMR for me, because she, again, the same way she uses... Um, her own consonants and like witches are very cruel Mm -hmm. and they have a very well developed sense of smell you know just like and um witches spend that time plotting to kill children and i'm just like oh my god i love you well that um, that part of the movie like just like the opening of her telling the story as he's listening that was all really effective because of her uh and and that voiceover and stuff but it was just like i felt like you know, it's just like we're being told a story here and we're seeing his reaction to it and we're kind of getting like interwoven with this this flashback to to her stuff. Like that was all like really good storytelling. Um, yeah. I wish that it, that had played more into like later on, like just in terms of like the painting stuff, because we do get the part where Angelica Houston, when she first shows up and she sees the yeah. the painting in the hotel and she just like... I, flicks it or whatever and the thing disappears she starts tapping it yeah you know, and you hear like yeah. when she's tapping it. <laughs> yeah um it, it would have been cool Do you if think like she killed that person in the painting oh probably yeah i always wondered like while she was tapping them and then even irvy goes over and starts like tapping it too and she's like Abby! and she has to go back into the elevator like yeah. oh man you know like i was i was gonna have some fun and then we see it just disappear and i always wondered if that was like giving little gut punches or you know like <laughs> crushing yeah. the rib cage no, of that's, that poor person in the painting that's what i got out of it because it was just saying like once okay. the person disappeared out of the painting it meant that they were dead um mm, but knows? uh yeah but it would have been cool if there was like more if that actually played into it like maybe like instead of someone being turned into a mouse or i mean i know that this is based on the book so they weren't going to like t- take creative liberties and and go there but i just because right. i was so i was so tired of all the mice shit by the because it just it just kept going on and on. That would have been cool if, it, if there was like other stuff that they were the witches were doing. Um, he says you've got dry roast peanuts. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. I just love those no, little voices coming out. That's of those fair. Mice. Oh, can, can we talk about the what's her name that you just mentioned? The the the, the assistant, Miss, Miss <laughs> the Irvine. Yeah, yeah. She, she calls her Irvy for short. Yeah. I was just, because I did not get, because you mentioned, I don't remember the book, but you mentioned that this is different in the movie. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they're make, the way that it's framed is like, oh, she, one still survived and she's going to go and get revenge or like fuck them up. Like yeah. that's what it seemed. And then she was like there, yeah. just like, here's your powers back. Here's your glasses back. And I was thinking like, first yep. of all, like if you're a witch, why can't you just use your powers to like cure his his eyesight? Uh, so you have to wear those glasses. <laughs> But, um, no, it's just, like, oh, this God. bitch, I think it's funny. It's just, like, she's she's an evil person, but she's just so petty that it's, like, well, Matt, we have a mutual enemy now. So I'm just going to, like, out of spite, not because I'm, I'm a good person or this is the right thing to do, but just out of spite, <laughs> I'm going to restore everything about this just to, just to fuck with the, the high witch. Okay, That's well, the, I yeah. <clears throat> I agree and disagree with you. <laughs> I'll talk about why I agree first. Again, for the first time, because I think I was looking at it through an analytical eye and not just watching it for shits and giggles like I usually do. Yeah, I noticed, um, wow, they really shoehorn 
Like, she seems to be totally on board. She's just as excited, maybe even more so, than any of the other witches, you mm -hmm. know, because she's the secretary. Like, she, the way she, uh, when, when we pull out Formula 86 and she's just showing it, you know, just, like, giving this kind of, like, weird, like, hatchet-faced, <laughs> you know, like, eh, look at it, look at it, <laughs> um, to all the other witches uh, in the audience. And then she, um when one of the witches speaks up and she thinks that they're going to poison the sweets and she's like, who spoke? She did! Fry her! You know? <laughs> <laughs> so she seemed relatively evil just a few hours ago and obviously she's mistreated by Miss Ernst, the Grand High Witch. Um, like we see her slam a door on her and, we <laughs> and that kind of thing. But, um, and then we see, of course, like the moment you were talking about, just like, you are not here to amuse yourself. You are here as my staff. Go to your room now, ladies. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting like the 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 uh, Doctor Loomis, like the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> extremely enraged. He was doing very well last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're probably veering in that direction. Yeah, um, but um, anyway, so Irvy gets the door slammed on her, and she gets left out of the banquet. And that's enough to make her want to quit. And I guess if you're passionate about, you know, dissembling and being a part of something, you know, like maybe that would make you want get disgruntled and want to get out. Like I'm tired of being, you know, your your butt boy. But she, <laughs> but she goes upstairs, and like the transition for her is basically her basically her pouring a glass of water for herself alone. And going and saying, I think it's just in a voiceover. I don't think she even says it. Just didn't want to be one of them anyway. And then later on, as all the witches are transforming into mice, uh, she goes down for whatever reason. She must have heard a ruckus. And she goes down to follow that ruckus and investigate. And she sees they've all turned into rats. And she's like, oh, my goodness. Or mice, rather. Not rats, sorry. Uh, and um, there is a difference. And... <laughs> Uh, and she's kind of peering at them, giving them almost the evil eye as, uh, as Helga and Luke are like, you know, making their way out and uh, they're about to, you know, reunite Bruno with his family. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that in a second. But um, and the next time we see her, she's standing in the window, like taking off her her little name tag and just kind of holding it. Um, I don't know, suspiciously? <laughs> like, we don't know what she's going to do. And the next time we see her, she has what appears to be either a better wig or her own hair. And she's got open-toed shoes. And she's got bare hands. So, you know, she doesn't have to hide, like, a big old claws and everything. So she... And I, I don't see any glowing purple eyes either. So apparently she's no longer, you know, a bad witch. She's a good witch. And I remember that was not, none of that made its way into the book. That character, I don't believe even it really existed. Mm -hmm. So w when we ended the movie, basically like where it ends, I remember thinking like, why do I feel like it's not over? Like what are, what there's, it feels like epilogue time. Like everything about. So does he not turn back in the book? He No, in the book, he, he, I, I don't even remember if they get like the, they get, because the Grand High Witch had a money printing machine that they allude to in the book. And I yeah. can't remember if he got the trunks of money or if he got the machine, but he basically had him and his grandma set and they made a plan that they were going to go basically tour the world and take out all the witches. And it basically ended, it was going to be this grandmother and this mouse and they were going to take on the world. And mm -hmm. that, and it made you think, so there might be a sequel, like a Charlie in the great glass elevator to, you know, Charlie and the chocolate factory yeah. of this witch's book never happened. Um, so when all this was going on and I see Irvy making her way and then shining that ring, I think she's holding a ring and doing that sinister laughing. <laughs> and the light is shining into the bedroom and then he turns back into a boy. I remember I was scared. I was, I was happy actually, because I was kind of scared. <laughs> like, what is she doing? And she's laughing really like, like, a, like a villain. What's, what is this? And then when she turned it back, all of a sudden it turns to just kind of like, a <laughs> like a, you know, a friendlier cackle. Yeah. Uh, but 
And I, I didn't mind that she didn't fix his eyesight because her job wasn't to, like, make everything better than it was. I, mean, I don't <laughs> mind. Was just I'm just questioning. Right? The train. Make things the way they were. And he didn't seem yeah. to complain either. He, when he, he even touches his glasses. He's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> you know? Yeah. In a close-up. There's a close-up of him going, hey, I got my glasses back. That's the, mo- that's the only thing I, I cared I about get- here. It, right, right, right. And then the mice come back, William and Mary. Off you go, back home to Luke. <laughs> and then he sees them. He's like, look, Grandma, they're back. And the music is back and everybody's happy. He screams, don't forget Bruno. And she waves. And that's when she, this actually moves me a little bit because she sees her hand. She's like, oh, I'm pretty. <laughs> and she just says she's going to go drive off and maybe fix Bruno. But um, this is the thing. Um, it does give me joy because I, I like watching you know good spread as easily as evil can <laughs> it's kind of encouraging to me it's nice because because when evil spreads i'm not surprised i'm just kind of like oh god here we go again when good spreads i'm you know and there's actually like people helping each other it it maybe this is all like aftermath from uh the the state of the world these past this past decade but um, i think i've always been this way and there's something about like balancing like all of the grotesqueness that we witnessed in a very you know gremlins-esque uh you know destruction of these witches of this coven of witches or the society of witches you know like in this particular corner of the of the world and then kind of like turning that on its head and saying like, oh, but you can make the choice to be good too and use your powers to like help people. That's awesome. Um, we didn't talk about that. That wasn't in any of the stories up until this point, but there were a lot of things that didn't come up that didn't get addressed in this movie and it doesn't make me love it any less. I actually kind of embrace the ending, especially now that I know it's coming. And the yeah. first time I saw it, I didn't know what to make of it though. I was just kind of like, huh, well, that's certainly a choice. <laughs> But um, because I really, it just, I really it just seemed the like idea. the studio was was like, well, we need a, a, a happy way to end this because it probably Maybe. doesn't feel happy to leave him as a mouse. So that's you know that's why it does feel very disjointed and and that character is I mean you're bringing all this stuff up other than the times that she's being yelled at and all that like she doesn't really yeah. stand out all that much so no. It's just Her kind of is very thin. Yeah, it's just and you and like you said, <laughs> you don't even know if she was a character in the book, so it just seems like yeah. this is like you know the the changes that they had to make to to put into the movie to correct things, and it's it's almost like a, a Deus Ex Machina of just like oh, and here's this character who like we did our best to yeah. just like fit her in somewhere and make this make sense, but. You and know. It, it might take the gratification of the acceptance. Yeah. Like that's one thing I loved about the book was the fact that the grandmother. The, you know, the Helga of the book, if that was her name. Yeah. Um, but Grandma um, basically accepted Luke this way. Like, she didn't stop her loving him. She was going to continue to care for him the way oh. she did when he was a boy. But I feel yeah. like we get kind of like that appetite satiated earlier in, of all people, Bruno's father accepting Bruno as a mouse finally after at the end, after all of the hijinks and all of the hysterics that, you know, him raging and, and her shrieking you know his mother shrieking Mm -hmm. finally he's presented you know they've had some time to think about it and and helga reintroduces bruno to his parents as a talking mouse and now they've had his mother can't stop crying but he's like no dear this is all bruno and i'm like oh acceptance yay like you always said you wanted me to lose weight well here i am yeah well look Um, at me now um if yeah everything felt way too easy like bringing down the witches like all like it's just all of that was it's just it it was prolonged but it felt way too easy (laughs) and then of course the 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 ending we're just like oh and suddenly here we're just gonna magically restore things because we brought this character in um so that's why I, i i have a better time in the first half of the movie than the second half but, uh, Arguably, I can't. I can't say if somebody told me this movie is more. If we're arguing purely style mm-hmm. and substance, if someone argued that this movie, in their eyes, was more style in lieu of substance, I couldn't tell them they're wrong because substance is like thinking in a linear fashion sometimes, and you know, really working to make things pay off. 
in a way. Um, I think there's heart. That's maybe what fills in the substance for me is the fact that there's a great deal of heart in the movie. Okay. But um, everything, uh, there, there are so many things that if we get into the wood, the weeds of like the logic, which I feel like we've been doing the past hour. Um, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> No, 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 because I wanted to go there, too. I had these notes of just, like, my problems. Like, the first thing, the first time the record skipped for me in the movie was just a simple line in the storytelling when Helga's telling the story to Luke about... She's telling him the rules about how to recognize a witch, and she's... And we're watching her friend Erica walk down, like, <laughs> an abandoned alley yeah. alone because the dad's just and like here here's a shilling go go get some milk yeah Make go sure get a liter right of milk yeah. <laughs> yeah papa and um and and come straight back and then she does and it, and here the grandma's like and it, for the first time the record skipped for me i was like because grandma says um you know perhaps if erica had known them you know like been able to recognize the warning signs like the hands and the eyes and everything and i'm like but she didn't even see the woman. The woman just like came out of the darkness and wrapped her arms around her and pulled her into the shadows and then she disappeared. How would recognizing the shoes or the gloves or the eyes or, or a wig or you know anything like that, like she didn't even see her. So I'm like, ah, oh, okay, there might be some problems with this, this particular screening that I never experienced before. Yeah. The logic doesn't quite add up, but I don't turn to a movie called The Witches for logic yeah. i guess and maybe i also give it uh, a great deal of leeway because there is a certain pocket of nostalgia that this uh totally movie occupies or in my heart you know like um if i were seeing it for the first time i, I don't know i probably still think it's brilliant in places i love angelica houston's performance of course mm -hmm. I, it was a, it was worthy of like an academy or um, academy award nomination but movies yeah. like this don't get acknowledged for shit like that unless it's maybe effects. Yeah. And that's shitty, and that's why I don't watch the Oscars anymore. So there you go. Fair <laughs> enough. Well, I, for one, uh, have exhausted all witches' conversations. So if, <laughs> if you don't have anything else to say... Uh... What, just one more thing. Okay. Can I, did you notice... It was a sound cue I never noticed before, because also this, I, this might be my first time watching it in HD. And hearing it in yeah. HD with my sound bar and everything. Did you hear the sound cue when Lucas, Luke, Lucas, when Luke first walks into the ballroom where the witches are meeting? What was the sound cue? It was very softly playing Disarray from The Shining. Oh, I'll have to go back and, and look at that. And very slowly. Yeah. Like... I barely heard it, and then I turned up the TV. I mean, really we loud. are we are in like, a, That's disarray. <laughs> an overlook hotel type of yeah. situation here. It was pretty cool. Angelica was pretty Houston good. was romantically linked with with Jack Nicholson for a time. Um, yeah, there you go. Connections yeah. there. Um, okay, mm -hmm. cool. Very very interesting. We'll look out for that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, without further ado, let's get to the cherry picker. It's not like they killed people. All right, we need a cherry on top, and I think that this is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll let you say it. Yeah, it's Angelica Houston. Absolutely. <laughs> As the grand I mean, high priest. Which... I feel like she didn't even really occupy that much space in the conversation, yeah. but it's like, what do you say? Like, the performance speaks for itself. If yeah. you know, you know. And she's also works as well comedically as she does as, like, an imposing figure, yeah. like, who poses a threat. I, I love her, whether she's in the full makeup or whether she's just in the regular Angelica Houston you yeah. know, makeup. And just like, putting there is putting no... the mask on. Uh, oh, what's that? that like, <laughs> there's something very Leatherface about that, too. Like when he it finds is. the mask like in the in, in its thing. Or like the next generation. I, I get like... Oh, know, I was getting next generation. Kind of like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's, it's. And, uh, and Luke kind of has the same glasses as Renee Zellweger does, too. So they're. they're <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. They're sister, like, they're soul sisters. Yeah. <laughs> Cinematically. Cinematic soul sisters. That's what The Witches and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next it's Generation. It's a spiritual are. sequel, yeah. <laughs> spiritual <laughs> sequel to The Witches. <laughs> 
All right. Oh. Uh, Angelica Houston it is. Uh, yeah. Last time we asked you who deserves to die the most in Final Destination. I nominated right. Carter Horton. You nominated Ms. Valerie Luton. And across Patreon, Instagram, YouTube, the total vote has been 671 for Carter versus 210 for Miss Luton. Wah, wah. <laughs> Are you surprised? No, not at all. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Absolutely not. That it, it it's I I'm surprised. Well, I guess because I had first dibs, but it just seemed like you had this uh agenda against um Care Smith. Care Smith, yeah. Care Smith. Mm. Uh cuz because you're like as long as he dies i don't care my bloody valentine it was it was almost like my my jared leto uh vendetta with yeah. uh, uh, uh american psycho and urban legend uh and I he's your he's your jared leto that's yeah. that's so funny maybe um, maybe i mean maybe. i think i might even dislike jared leto even more than Kara smith now but yeah there was a time where i liked jared leto yeah not really so much <laughs> that's anymore. that's that's fair anyway we're we're not here to shade <laughs> Too, too, too much. <laughs> really? <Yeah>. Really? <laughs> uh, Fank Matthew. I always feel bad for Ms. Luton when I rewatch this film. She just seems to be uh, trying to get by, especially compared to the more obnoxious teens and the nihilist oh. outlook of this franchise. My vote goes to Carter. Not a franchise I return to often, but I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Oh, thank you. But also, like, by condemning her students just trying to get by. All right. Keep going. Melissa. <laughs> awesome. Says, Carter deserves to die, but the teacher's death was one of the best in the whole series. I can't. Okay. I can't comment on that now because I, I still have. I, it's been so long since I've seen <laughs> the sequels. Uh, I don't know if right. this is mentioned, but, like, as we're recording this today, I guess they're, they're, they announced that they're started to film six <gasps> yeah yeah it's happening okay and it's uh, and it's it. gonna be a theatrical release as far as i know because i like back then they were saying it was only gonna be like hbo or just max or whatever it's called and like yeah, no that is yeah. no no we don't we don't like that the theatrical releases yeah thank you thank you Put it in the theater uh rob wrangle so glad you're y'all y'all are covering Final Destination of the movie and the series really served as a gateway horror for me in my childhood, along with Scream. My parents even got me the Final Destination 3 DVD with those special features for Christmas one year. I never really appreciated Devin Sawa much until I saw Chucky. I'm a certified fan now. Oh. I voted Ms. Luton. Okay. Well, I understand she's going through grief, feeling guilty for allowing the other teacher to remain on the plane. It's not Alex's fault. The way she treated Alex after rubbed me the wrong way, especially since he is a student and not a peer. I agree. Jazzy Boo. The teacher's death was overkill, but I didn't like how she treated Alex after. Like, he saved your life. Be nice. Neon <laughs> Planes. Ms. Luton got one of the most agonizing deaths I've ever seen for absolutely no reason. So I, I, <laughs> it sounds like that's a Carter vote. <laughs> Help yourself, I'm busy, says Carter, although I do feel bad for him at the end, but he was a one-note character. He was. Yeah. Amethyst yeah. Frost. Carter's definitely going to win, so I'll be a vocal minority again this week. Aww. Ms. Luton is such a bizarre character, and she could have prevented at least 12 of the 17 steps of her Rube Goldberg death scene if she were just <laughs> a little less unhinged. When she reached for the towel on the knives and still looks surprised when the knives fall down onto her, I was that gif of Judge Judy gesturing at her watch and slamming the table impatiently, yelling at death to hurry up and <laughs> take this woman out. Thank you, Amethyst. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. The FD 180. Uh, that sounds like a, a very specific username for Final Destination. I mean, I'd say Valerie Luton. At least Carter was redeemed in the alternate ending. Was he? I don't Oh, yeah, you didn't even watch it. Was he? I, no, I, I don't know. know. Um, but I, I think I have a vague memory. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Thomas Baker. I choose Ms. Luton just because. Very vocal minority. Mike Baum, when the chair comes down on that knife, though, 
uh, Nobu, oh, I'll go with Edward on this one. I think in a Ms. Luton would have been a more interesting character if she was slightly older and the other teacher was her husband and she had a child as a student on the plane. I understand people grieve in different ways, but for me, it would make her reaction to surviving make more sense if she had lost someone like a husband or a child on the plane. I don't know. Her anger towards Alex always seemed odd to me. Anyway, love the pod. Thanks for 100 episodes. Thank you. Yeah. Jessica Jan Pasco. This may be weird to say, but I'm so happy Ms. Luton is an option. It's been 20 plus years watching this movie, and for some reason, this woman annoys me so much. Also, I'd like you to know that I am currently listening to the episode while I'm on a bus back home, and you guys have been my company for most of, for the oh, most part yes. of my eight hour trip. Uh, P.S. Love you, Eddie. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what did I do to deserve this? Well, what, what is this? You do. You ha- I, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Mrs. Gobble to you. Ooh, hard one. Neither one was particularly bad. They what? were, they were, they were both bad. Come on. Which movie were you watching? Okay. <laughs> Who was bad in that movie then? Wow. I mean, it's really hard because, like, we, we even discussed that, uh, I think, last week when we were just like, who do we pick? Like, do any yeah. of these people really deserve it? Because, I mean, I guess Carter sucked, like, before everything yeah. happened. But, like, the teacher was perfectly nice beforehand, except for that guy <laughs> in the airport. <laughs> With yeah, the, yeah, he yeah, had, like, face what... paint, too. <laughs> like, I don't know. Oh, like, how, 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 how well do you trust someone who has face paint on, you know? Oh, Jesus In an airport. <laughs> I mean, technically makeup is face paint. So anyway, let's put that to bed. Go on, read it. it is no, it was like else? full on like face. It was makeup is well, there's, like, there's an fault. artistry. To, to... Okay. <laughs> I blame the movie. I blame okay. the, the, the production. <laughs> Bruno Salata. Carter was the one actively being immature and stupid. Ms. Luton did have one of the best deaths in the franchise, though. Um, okay. Heather Marie. Carter was a jerk, but he was redeemed in the end. I still voted for him because he was such a jerk, though. I think Ms. Luton was a good person, a good teacher, and she lashed out at Alex out of trauma and shock. That doesn't excuse it. Once again, also, I don't... uh, Yeah, trauma. trauma. It all comes down to the trauma. (laughs) (laughs) Generational trauma. That's not like... That's not like your note from, you know, from from home where you can say, like, I'm sorry, I can't do this because trauma, you know, like you can't. (laughs) Trauma is the new like blaming, blaming your shitty behavior on your your zodiac sign. It's like, no, I'm just I'm a (laughs) shitty person because of trauma. I didn't bring my homework, not because the dog ate it, but because I have trauma. (laughs) Convenient trauma. It only affects me on certain days. Actually, you know what? Trauma does that. It is actually pretty unruly and you don't can't schedule it. But still, I'm not I I, I disagree with a lot of what was just said. Keep going. (laughs) Uh, Robo Greek. I'm shocked by this. Carter was just your typical cocky jock. Well, Ms. Luton, who was very supportive of Alex as soon as Alex became terrified, made him feel like a creep and a freak. So Ms. Luton deserves it more. Shame on you all. Or shame on all of you. Wow, people. Everybody sees through their own lens. That's really interesting. Chris Darkcolor. Carter. Because Billy was right. He was a dick. Uh, (laughs) Abdul Royzida. But I like both of them. All right. Tara so Brewer. Why? <laughs> I don't know. You have to ask. Tara Brewer, Carter. Well, we all know that Care Smith plays a jerk and cheater in My Bloody Valentine 3D as a sheriff <laughs> with his longtime Dawson's Creek co star Jensen Ackles. But in Final Destination, he played Carter, a jerk best friend to Alex Browning, which played by Devon Sawa. Uh, <laughs> isn't that Devon Sawa? Um, <laughs> who doesn't believe in the dead spirit that terrorizing the, that terrorizing them on the airplane and thinks he's a freak, but at the end, Carter gets eliminated with a sign from dead spirit plus Ms. 
Lucian was in Black Christmas with Katie Cassidy and I, I haven't gotten to a period yet, just saying, with Katie Cassidy. And here's a huge <laughs> common factor. Mrs. Luton died both here, Final Destination and Black Christmas. Carter, right. which is Kara Smith, he died in Final Destination. But in My Bloody Valentine 3D, he almost died from Jensen Ackles, who is the possessed minor. Lots of spoilers for My Bloody Valentine 3D. <laughs> I forgot that she died in, in Black Christmas because I don't remember so much of that movie. Yeah. But, okay. <laughs> that particular cool. iteration of the movie. Thank you, Tara. <laughs> yeah, thank and you. 67 Maxfield, you guys put Ms. Luton up for death? Oh, okay, first of all, don't <laughs> don't lump me into this shit. I have my nomination, he has his. You guys put Ms. Luton up for death. Was her on-screen death already not penance enough for whatever you thought she did wrong in the first place? She's virtually oh, guiltless, if I remember correctly, yet struggles with guilt. Oh. The most out of all the survivors. This is fucked up, boys. Very fucked up indeed. I can't tell if this is serious or a joke. I hope it is a joke, but if it isn't, I, I'd probably laugh harder. I hope it's serious. <laughs> 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 All right, whatever. I mean, I I killed Tree's mom, you know, and I, you know, I, I, killed, I, wish, tea, I, wish I, I killed Tree's mom. I, I, I killed Tree's mom. I, I killed the tea, tea tree. Deal with it. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> but I killed Tree's mom in Happy Death Day, uh, and I, I, you know what? Per, honestly, I wish people had lumped the two of us together in that because I remember getting a lot of people going like, "What is Eddie's problem? I can't wait to hear <laughs> his reason for killing Tree's mom." <laughs> like, and um, I just wish they could have said, "Like, how did you guys pick Tree's mom?" I want you to get lumped in more often. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With my well, choices. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for. I don't even know the, the name. I'm just Bruno's dad. What's the last name? Mr. Jenkins. Bruno Jenkins. Bruno Jenkins' father. My dad's rich, but he's very tight. We've got five cars. Because <laughs> this guy is just the worst. He's very <laughs> unpleasant and rude to to wait staff, or I guess anyone who he who he believes is mm. below him in stature. He openly flirts with other women in front of his wife. <laughs> I don't even know there's there's real there's nothing else. Like that's that's <laughs> it. Like shitty to 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 wait staff and and hotel staff and flirts with a married man who flirts with other women. Like, he doesn't even have the discretion to do this, like, secretly. Just out in the open. Mm -hmm. And she's just standing there. I don't, I don't feel, I, like, I feel sorry for her. And I don't, like, this, this that woman deserves her, her shrill, oh, well, you know, all her moments. Because she's been put through the ringer. So that's, that's, <laughs> that's my vote, my nomination. Okay, I'm at odds here. Because, like, there are some really heinous acts that are committed and that are attempted in this movie by any and all of the witches. Is it wrong that I don't want to kill any of them? <laughs> I don't think any of them deserve to die. I mean, I'm entertained as fuck by their death when they all turn into mice. But um, I, I, I can't in good faith, like... Even the Grand High Witch, like the most appalling woman in the world. I mean, maybe it's just the black and the purple of it all. She brings to mind, like, the, the great Maleficent. But, um... <laughs> so gotta, I can't, okay, gotta okay, I, I can't choose. I do. Yeah. So the only other person I can think, which is odd, because he's ultimately the one who takes down the Grand High Witch, is Mr. Stringer. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> the hotel manager... Just because, I mean, even though Rowan Atkinson plays him, and I think he does a lovely job, I, I love Mr. Bean so much more than Mr. Stringer. And um, I don't like the way he chases Luke into his hotel room. Uh, and I always feel defensive. I'm always right there with the grandmother. He's just like, is this your room to Luke? And he says, yes. And the grandma just goes, yes. Like, you know, is there something you'd like to say to an adult? Someone your own size, you piece of shit. And then she lies about nibbled cakes. Or no, I mean, Luke lies about the cakes that Bruno nibbled, saying that, like, rats, like, nibbled them. <laughs> and she's saying, I saw a rat this morning. Madam, you were only in the hotel this afternoon. 
and everything about him is just first of all just like snooty from the get-go and and very not even posh but like thriving yeah. for posh like striving for posh and i'm just like okay calm down you run a, a hotel you can be pleasant <laughs> you can help enhance the experience for everybody and then then the way the 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 maid who's like going nuts because she keeps finding mice everywhere <laughs> He basically me too's her by like isolating in a closed room with her and seducing her in whatever way he can when he's totally her boss, totally her authority figure, and then like makes plans to meet her later that night. He's the whole reason she takes Formula 86 and puts it on her neck and not in between her breasts and then starts growing fur there. So, um, and I will say just in, 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 just to reiterate to anybody who's still listening and hasn't voted yet, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Jenkins, Bruno's father, does accept him at the end. And I think acceptance goes a long way. Mr. Stringer doesn't really ever accept anybody. He just kind of gets informed that there's a rather impetuous, ugly mouse under the water jug and unwittingly defeats, you know, like takes down the Grand High Witch, the heavy of the entire movie, just because... Somebody else told him to. He didn't even know that he was saving the day. So fuck him. I think it's there hilarious you that you're campaigning against me. Uh, <laughs> was it what? What right. is it? For, Formula eighty six. Eighty six. Eighty six. Yeah. Eighty six. Yeah, because it's like it's like the term is just like eighty six. Like when you work in a restaurant, it's just like eighty six. This item, like it's just. It's, yeah, it's I think somebody there. even says that. Yeah. <laughs> in, at one point. Yeah. Yeah. Although, Very, do they say maybe? Well, I mean, the Grand High Witch does that, and she's in England, so maybe yeah. the English do. I don't know what the English share with us language-wise anyway. I told an English man a few days ago. Well, with ago, you, I mean, you're you're in the America. I'm in the, the Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I'm, we, I'm, we in, I'm in the U.S. I'm in the U.S., but I, I yeah. saw a guy in Venice uh, with an English accent. I told him I left something for him on his doorstep, and he just looked at me with disdain and said, what's a doorstep? And I was like, do the English not have doorsteps? Anyway, that's neither here nor what there. What is it, like a stoop? Vote! I, I tried to say, like, well, the threshold. The threshold. And, I, and I, I almost, I, I held my tongue. Yeah, I almost the, the wanted to say, like, the threshold. space between the door and the, <laughs> the walkway. I almost said, no, but I almost said, like, the entryway to your apartment. Oh, sorry, your flat. You're flat. <laughs> but, or, but maybe he maybe know. he's in a he's in like a like a building and he has to take the lift up to his his flat <laughs> to gather the snowsberries. Yeah. <laughs> I am <laughs> Piccadilly. Powder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. We'll always have that. <laughs> you, well, Thank you, Carrie. Always. You, you can <laughs> you can vote your heart, vote your conscience for either Mr. Jenkins or Mr. Whatever your choice was. Um, stringer stringer <laughs> stringer 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 <laughs> and that'll oh God. that yeah that uh that uh, poll will be open on patreon if you are supporting yeah. uh, instagram you can go follow us at the cherry picker pod or on youtube here the community section so subscribe to us here if you are new to the cherry picker you can also listen to us the rss feed link is in the the, 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 the descriptions down below edward what are your socials uh you can find me on youtube or uh um letterboxd uh instagram oh my god okay um anyway <laughs> <laughs> no there was one more what was it oh uh tiktok uh edward is truth one word traditional spelling how about you zach cherry youtube main channel zach cherry that is c-k-c-h-e-r-r-y Retro bitch face on Instagram. And then I'm also on uh, Twitter, Zach Cherry 8, and Letterbox as well, Zach Cherry. Uh, what's going on next week, pray tell? Is it the one with the young people in, the, in that place? In the, and they cross the threshold. <laughs> Into the flat? At the flat. It's not a flat, though. It's, it's a, is there a, an English way to say house? <laughs> The hovel. The ho the, the, the hall. Well, it's the, the summer. It's the, the summer home. We said, where, yes, where do you summer? Where do you summer? 
That's like, isn't that, is that English or, yeah, I guess the English do say, on holiday. We're, we're going to, to the residence in, in, uh, in the, the holiday. Anyway, okay, um, it's the strangers. It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Edward. And thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. And we will be right back. <laughs>